by Ryder, 2-3 zone by Ryder, has truly stagnated the Lady Hornets. So it'll um, be interesting to see what adjustments Coach Caputo will make, but they definitely, either one of the shooters or a couple of the shooters got to wake up or he's got to figure out how to get down inside of that zone to get some high percentage shots. Ryder trying to even it up or pull within one on this possession as they trail by three with a minute 20 left in the second quarter. Uh, a little bit of uh, contact. Loose ball goes out of bounds. Touch class by the Hornets. Ryder will have the inbound pass. Ryder is settling down and beginning to get that ball on the block quite often. Jamaro bounces. Gets it into Moses. Moses backs it up, takes it across near top of the key. Passes it right side. Hyacinth, she crosses. That's a and it's stolen away. Bullock. Bullock. The only player on the court wearing a mask while she's playing as Bullock makes the steal and then takes it down and gets the layup. 21-16, Hornets back in front by five, under a minute left in the half. That's a great steal. It was, and then you finish it off with the bucket. Transition, late. Tried the layup, hit bottom backboard and came right down to Delaware State. Jumper for three, rim on the attempt by Bullock, and the Hornets will get the ball. Yep, special goes to the Hornets this time. 38 seconds left in the half. And it's looking for the inbound. Yeah, they, they've got it into Holmes. Now the jumper, left side, Collins off the rim again. It goes up high. Holmes underneath with the rebound. It's knocked out of her hand, and it goes out of bounds. It will be Hornets ball, 19 seconds left on the shot clock and just about 30 seconds left in the half, and we'll have a short timeout here, the 30-second timeout called by Delaware State. Hey, if you're listening to this game uh, online right now, and um, you're listening to it on a PC or, or your iPad or whatever, and you need to go somewhere, you know, you can take us with you anywhere you're going just by downloading the HSRN app. That means anywhere you are, we're there with you. So go to your, your favorite app store, whether you were running a Windows product or a, an Apple product. You'll find it on your, your app store. It's free. Download the app. It's easy to do. I've done it. And if I've done it. Hey, it can be done. It, it's very easy. <laughs> it can be done. It's free. It's easy. Download the app. Take us with you everywhere you want to go. All right, the only thing that stands between us and the halftime here is this 29.8 seconds remaining. Lady Hornets have the ball here with 19 seconds remaining on the shot clock and um, score 21 to 16, um, Lady Hornets. And the Hornets will have the ball to inbound it. And they do. They get it in the bullet. She'll pass it and falling away was Sam. Now stolen away by the Hornets again. Good steal by Lyric Turner. It's Shea Collins. They'll work it to the right side to Melissa Sam. Now back out to Collins. Out near standing just about on the wing of the logo at center court. She'll work into the lane. Drives off the glass. Too strong. Holmes underneath with a rebound. And she gets fouled as she goes up with 2.7 seconds left in the half. That was a tremendous drive there by Sharaja Collins. Uh, just couldn't get it to go. Nice pick there. <coughs> It was a nice pick there, and she turned the corner but just couldn't finish it. And then um, Zoe Holm does what she does. You know, she's very aggressive on the, on the glass offensively and defensively. Um, Pull down the offensive rebound, and she's going to get an opportunity to go to the charity stripe here. Ryder's head coach was trying to make a, a case for a jump ball there, but uh, the officials weren't having any of that. It was clear. She had her, she had her um, young lady um, had her arm as she went up to shoot. Zoe Holm misses the first. She had some issues from the foul line last year. Shot only 37% from the charity stripe. So she needs to uh, get that game together here and makes the second shot. The next on the second one. And the first half will come to an end here at Memorial Hall with the Hornets leading here 22 to 16 over Ryder. A pretty good start here. This is the fourth game of the season for Ryder. So they've had a chance to work together. Hornets came out. First game of the season for them, and they look pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I think if I'm Coach Caputo, I'm still a bit concerned because you really could have kind of taken this game and just put it totally out of reach here the first half. 
Um, you know, the defense has been tremendous the first half, but they had about a five-minute period there where they just had a, a lot of letdowns, and they allowed Ryder to get back into the game. Now Ryder is feeling pretty comfortable about where they are and, and how they're playing, so makes for a very interesting second half because at this point in time, I think both teams feel like they've had some success in doing a few things. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments are made by both coaches, but nonetheless, we have a really good contest on our hands here today. American Spirit Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of DSU on HSRN. Stop by one of their offices. They're in Middletown, Newark, and Dover. Find out how they can help you save money. When it comes to your car or truck, trust the duck. That's Fred Drake Automotive, 302-378-4877. Omar is back at the studio, pumping at the bit to give you news about what's happening in basketball around the country here today. So we're going to send it back to him. and We'll be back with second half act from Memorial Hall in Dover. The Hornets leading here at the half, 22-16. to 16. This is Delaware State University basketball. We are HSRN, and we're the voice of choice. Uh, 13.35, Mark. Okay. All right, hold on, hold on. After he hooked up the stuff here, we started getting a hum in his microphone. So we need to get that cleared. Okay, we need to get it cleared up. What did you observe so far? I'm so, wait a minute, let me get rid of this.
University of Delaware scheduled to come here and play. Wow. I tell you what, with everybody's, you know, kind of hanging on and looking forward to it with anticipation, um, Coach Mills said has continued to build that program piece by piece. Oh, he has. And, um, you know, we all are looking forward to it. Yep. Now, the way to follow the action is you can listen here on hsrn.com, but if you need to go somewhere, make sure you download the app. Just go to your app store, download the HSRN app, and take us with you anywhere you want to go. We even had people uh, in the stands listening to the games. In your the car, app. in yeah. the grocery store, take me where you go. Yep. Back to the action here as Lyric Turner will bring the ball down court for Delaware State. Lot is still in the 2-3 zone, half court here. Ohidi over to uh, Sam. They'll work it around. Sam's just playing at the free throw line. She's good. Oh, yeah. She just stepped up and took the jumper, went over top of everybody, and Melissa Sam into double figures, 35-22. Turn it's up. 4.05 left in the third period. Toomey, top of the key, looking to pass off, gives it on the right side to Evans. Evans takes a few steps up, jumper, misses, comes out to Lyric Turner for Delaware State. Turner, end to end, goes up with the layup. She gets fouled. She goes down hard. She's pretty tough, man. Yeah. She bounced around like that all year last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it always got up. So let's hope she's okay. She's on her feet. Yep. She might have just took a, took a hard shot when she went down there because she had uh, gone up in the air a bit for the layup. Yeah, she's pretty tough. She's kind of lost control there, uh, went airborne and couldn't catch herself. Took an unexpected fall. And that hardwood floor does not have the give of the turf out in Alumni Stadium. <laughs> oh, man. She, uh, Aliri Turner, she misses the first, but, you know, I was getting ready. I just started smiling because she gives you the little shoulder shimmy. That's right. Before every free throw here. So, you know, we haven't seen that in a while. And last year. He shot 80% from the line. She missed both. Melissa Sam comes up with the offensive rebound. Ah, they turn it over, trying to. Trying to get it. It went out of bounds, and it will be. Yeah, Lear Turn. Lear Turn was thinking about shooting it and um, decided to reverse the ball. Nobody was on the same page with her. She ended up throwing it out of bounds. So, yeah. uh, Lady Horn is going 2 3 zone again here against the Ryder. First game of the season for Delaware State. This is the fourth of the season for Ryder. Hornets were scheduled to play on Wednesday against the University of Delaware. That game was canceled. Now the Bronx work it inside, off the glass. It'll roll around and fall in for Rafaela Toussaint. Went to the free throw line and went high-low for a basket. Um, Defensively, Ryder just knocked the ball out of bounds. Hornets will keep it here down at their end of the court. Ryder, two is playing 2-3 zone. They're 2-3 um, zone half court here on this out-of-bounds underneath situation. Lady Hornets taking the ball out. Looking for the inbound opportunity. Long pass goes in. To Krumber. They'll work it back around the left side to Turner. Turner looks, tries to go inside to Sam just over her fingers. Turned and it over. It uh, turned over to Ryder. Just a little bit too high for Melissa Sam. And fireball takes it left side to Toussaint. Toussaint gives it off to Moses. And the Hornet. Fireball with a three for Ryder to make it 35-27. Yeah, Ryder's still sticking with this 2-3 zone. It's just giving the Lady Hornets a lot of problems early on. They were trying to screen the guards at the top, which is what they just did on a reversal here. Two and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Krumber goes left side. Turner jumper from outside, missing. Krumber underneath tried to get the rebound. It went out of bounds off of her fingertips. Sam tried to jump in there and save it, but couldn't. Yeah, I'm just not sure about the lineup right now that Coach Caputo has in. You know, he doesn't really have shooters. He had um, uh, Lyric Turner, which he just subbed uh, for Naija Law here. 
Um, but he doesn't, they play in a zone, and you really only have, you know, potentially one three-point shooter, the and hot that's Kroomber. Yeah, the hot shooter today has been Melissa Sam with 11 points for Delaware State. That's Moses, top of the key, left side, looking for three. Fireball, again looking for the three, missing. And the rebound is put through by tomorrow. Yeah, you got an offensive rebound off a three-point shot miss there. And um, DeMar was able to kind of give a little head fake there and get it up on the backboard there for a finish. And drew a foul. So she'll go to try to make it the, th the traditional three-point play. Coach Caputo's going to have to figure out how to solve this zone. You know, early in the first half, he was able to get the ball in the inside to the free throw line area to Melissa Sams, and she was very successful in converting. She missed that shot. Rebound, loose ball taken by Delaware State. They send it down quickly to Kroomber. She goes cross court, jumper by Mimi Bullock, and she's got three. Well, I stand to be correct. The Bullock said I can make the three, and she knocks down a three in transition. Big time shot there. They needed that. They needed that, yeah, and three helped them. It's 38 to 29. Now it's Toussaint, left side. Gives it off to Moses at the top of the key. Moses passes it off. Fireball tries to work inside. Gives it off to, uh, that's Toussaint, who gets underneath and puts it up off the glass. Yeah, Ryder's beginning to score far too easily. 38-31. Hornets trying to work it inside. They do. The ball won't go. Loose ball saved by Ryder. They'll take it out. It's getting a little chippy right now. Zoe Referee's home. allowing them to play a bit. Yep. Getting tough inside there. There's a good Back pass. door cut. Oh, yeah. And it works for Michaela Fireball as she picks up two more. I'll tell you, Fireball has been a tremendous boost for them. She's gotten probably eight points here. Fireball has turned into a fireball for Ryder. 38-33 from an 11-point lead down to a five-point lead now. That's what Ryder did in the first half, but the Hornets managed to hold on. Yeah, this, zone, this zone is causing problems here. Somebody's got to step up and make a shot. Good shot. Hey, guess what? Janasia Law just dropped a three for Delaware State. She listened. She heard you. That's huge. 41-33. They needed it. Those threes can make you healthy fast, can't they? It's Moses. Right side. She passed inside and right to Melissa Sam. And as the third quarter goes to an end, they're going to rule the shot no counts. Yeah. They're going to give her that shot. No, I think they're going to correct it. They're going to correct it. They're going to go review it. I think she didn't get it off in time. The buzzer went off before. It, or, or either maybe it left her hand. But it's something they're going to have yeah. to review for sure. If it left her hand, it's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking she's a little shy of getting it off. All right. But I may be wrong. Let's take this break. We'll know when we come back. We're going to take the break here. The end of the third quarter with Delaware State leading. Right now, they're saying on the scoreboard, 43 to 33. This is HSRN, the voice of choice. I think they just took the basket away. Yeah, I didn't think she got it off in time. Well, the Hornets are going to have to shoot really well here to finish this game because if for whatever reason, you know, if they find a, themselves in a drought yep. shooting-wise, this game could get really interesting here to the close. Yep. Fireball is – Fireball didn't play the first half. Yes, she did. She she didn't take a shot, did she? Let me see. I know. I called her name. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She didn't take a single shot the first half, though. Okay. But I tell you, she can play. I think what every coach goes through, right, you know, Coach Caputo is trying to figure out which combinations to play, you know, which groups and combinations to play to get his best productivity. And that's always the journey early in the season, trying to get it figured out. All right, during the break there, we found out that um, indeed – it was not a basket that counted. Time had run out. So 
The score is 41-33 here after three quarters. Gary Lang, Coach John Hill. All right, fourth and final quarter here. Lady Hornets leading by eight. Uh, Ryder is taking the ball out just in front of us here, half court. Lady Hornets appear to be in a 2-3 zone here to start this quarter. And it's DeMauro with the ball for Ryder. She'll give it to Laneja Evans. With the right side, back to DeMauro. Fireball in the middle. DeMauro shot looking for three, and that was from way outside. Missed, came down to Collins. Now to Law. Hornets jumper that went over top of the basketball off the, off the uh, backboard and down into the hands of Deja Moses. Yeah, they're moving in transition quickly to try to get a quick shot in transition to Lady Hornets. Inside to Fireball. She has to clear it and take it out to the right side. But she was faced away from the basket when she took the pass, and her momentum took her forward. Tomorrow now, left side, works around top of the key. Five seconds on the shot clock. Her jumper goes. Yeah, they're getting really good looks. Ryder is getting the shot clock running down, and they're getting, they're getting some really incredible looks. Looks like Naysia, Naysia Law here, shoulder has kind of popped out of socket from what it appears. A lot of stiffness here in her left shoulder. Yeah, she is hurting, doubled over. She's going to have to come out of the game because yep. they actually stopped the action. Yeah, the officials called the timeout there when they saw the uh, she was injured. The uh, trainer went on the court. They're taking her off now. And it uh, looks like they're going to go right to the training room. Yeah, anytime that trainer comes on to the floor, playing surface, you automatically have to come off the floor. Uh, but if I'm Coach Caputo right now, I'm a little concerned because, you know, Ryder is surging. Surging. They've been a really kind of, it's been a, you know, kind of, you know, up and down game. It's been messy at, at different points. Um, but they're beginning to kind of find a way to surge and get some baskets here. Um, Lady Hornets got to figure out how to um, how to score against this 2-3 zone. It looks like Coach Caputo is going to put um, Zoe Holmes um, at, the far, at the foul line. I'm sorry. Four out. Four out, one in. But he has shooters out there. Got Jaraja Collins. Bullock or Holmes. They're looking to set a screen at the foul line area here. Collins left side down in the corner to... Wow, Holmes. that's a big shot. The only more. Last year, she didn't even demonstrate the ability to make threes, and she stepped up and made a big three there. That that's helped huge. Too. Back to a nine-point lead. 43-35. They said three, but the scoreboard is showing a 43-35 score. So they only gave her two? Yeah. You got to come out on this young lady. Oh, she just dropped a three, and that is Michaela Fireball. Yeah, Kroomberg has got to come out, giving her a free look there. 43-38. So Roger Collin, a little shake and bake, dancing Euro step down the lane, finishes at the basket. 45-38, Hornets back with a seven-point lead here. 8.05 left in the game. Playing Ryder, the Bronx, as they're trying to pick up their first win of the season. Hornets trying to open their season with a win. And it's M Moses driving inside. Thought me might get a charge there. It was As a good Lyric no call. Turner went down. Anything, if anything, it was been a foul, but it was a good no call. Zoe a, Holmes underneath gets the layup off the glass. I'll tell you what, they do a great job of running in transition, looking for opportunities to score in transition and finishing. 47-38, Hornets pull out again with a nine-point lead. Seven and a half to go. Moving inside the lane, the ball couldn't be controlled by Lanasia Evans. She lost it. Did she get it before it went out of bounds? And it, might, it looks like it might have been tipped uh, or batted out of bounds by Collins. Inbound pass intended for Fireball. That one, Collins hustled over there, got a hand in the way. It goes out of bounds. They're contesting these inbound passes. Yeah, they've gotten really aggressive. Um, only thing you got to be worried about if, you know, if Ryder cuts back door, and they've kind of demonstrated the ability when you overplay on the wings that they do cut back door. So, Lady Hornets have to be particularly careful. You got a nine-point lead, force them to make shots over the top of you. Evans couldn't That's get a it good in cleanly. That's steal by Deirdre Moore. That's a great steal. That's Shea Zoe Collins running the floor. Zoe Holmes took it away. And, uh, Missed yeah, the layup, though. 
Yeah, they did. Holmes with the missed layup. Now the shot Oof. from outside. Missed by fireball. Hornets take the loose ball. Collins drives down with it. Gets it off on the right side. Hustle. Scramble for the ball. Hornets clear it out. Collins underneath. Holmes. Zoe Holmes gets two more for Delaware State to make it 49-38. Hornets get a timeout here with 6.57 left in the game. Yeah, that up-tempo flow has really helped the Lady Hornets, and more importantly, they've been really scrappy on loose ball situations, coming up with most of them and having the opportunity to finish. Delaware State with an 11-point lead. This is Delaware State University basketball on HSRN, the voice of choice. For brakes, tune-ups, or realignments, trust the duck. That's Fred Drake Automotive, 302-378-4877. Hornets here with uh, just under seven minutes to go in this game, and they have a pretty nice lead here on Ryder, uh, an 11-point difference, 49-38. to 38. Yeah, I don't think it's enough to get comfortable, though, because no, not you've got yet. seven minutes here. Yeah. And, um, and, they've, and they're capable of making threes. Too soon to rest. Ryder inbounds it. Fireball will try to bring it down court, trying to get around Kroomber. Charging foul. Yes, they get it. As Fireball. Fireball. I think that's her fourth. Hey. We'll have to see if we can pick it up. She only knows one way, and that's to the basket. Fireball has. Oh, they called. Uh, they, they changed it and made it a blocking foul. Oh, they made a blocking foul? Yeah, Kiana Kroomber will get the foul. It seemed to be pretty. Obviously, it was a charge. I thought he actually called the charge. That's what they did, and then they changed it. Wow. It's a huge play there. Yeah. But Ryder keeps the ball. Now Toomey trying to uh, clear it out. Gets it to Evans on the right side. Evans crosses around the top of the key. Gives it off to Fireball. Inside to Toomey. Toomey tried to turn around and get a layup. The ball was uh, knocked out of her hands, but it's going to be a foul called on Demi Moore. That'll stop the clock with 6.37 to go. And it will send Toomey, Toomey to the line. Titties. Toomey played against Delaware State in that game last year. She played four minutes in that game. She didn't score, but she did get uh, some action against the Hornets last season. She missed the second one. Got the first, missed the second. Make it 49-39. And Hornets bring it down quickly. Yeah, Riders in the 2-3 zone here. That's, we are five out. Lady Hornets is kind of showing a five out here. Turner. Offensive set. Kroomber, uh, from down in the corner, left corner in front of the bench, missing underneath, fight for the ball. Good scrap for the, trying to get that rebound by Demi Moore. Yes, yeah, she did. She just she, missed the follow-up. Yeah, and then uh, Ryder took that next rebound. It's tomorrow to Toomey and off of her hands. Kroomber turns around and, and oh, they tried the behind the back pass and she actually hit her own foot with it. Demi Moore now with the ball. As uh, the uh, Lyric Turner tried to get a little too fancy, now the Hornets lose it underneath their own basket. Yeah, she lost an opportunity there. Should have just kind of kept it really simple. Lyric Turner tried a behind the back pass and uh, hit off of her own heel. 
Now Fireball works inside, gets another two. That's a differential of four points, the two that you didn't get from being fancy, and then you gave up two. 49-41, eight-point lead. Yeah, Riders back in this 2-3 zone. They just kind of satisfied with forcing the Lady Hornets to make a shot. 5-10 left in the game. There's a shot from down in the left corner, trying for three. Lyric Turner missing that. Ball comes off, gets to Ryder. They try to go inside, and now we're going to get a foul here on Zoe Holmes as she tried to reach in past Deja Moses and uh, bat away that pass. Yeah, it's a pretty basic call that you can't reach around, um, grab on the arm, and hopefully with the substitutions here, with Janaza Law, Sharaja Collins, and Melissa Sams entering the game, get a little more firepower offensively. And uh, Maja Bullock. So we got a pretty much a new group with the exception of Demi Moore. Some substitutions for Ryder, too. Uh, Hornets might need that firepower going down the last uh, just under five minutes of the game to play here with an eight-point lead. They go inbound. They get it all the way into Laneja Evans. Evans gives it off to DeMauro for Ryder. Ryder, uh, DeMauro backs up to the logo, now works down the right side, and has it taken away. Shea Collins with the steal. And then we have a jump ball as Ryder tries to get it back. Rafaela Toussaint running in there trying to uh, take it away. Jump ball possession to the Hornets. Well, great hustle by Collins. Yeah, Collins is doing a great job. He's putting a lot of pressure on her. And it's kind of been kind of, you know, looking like she wanted to take a stab at getting the steal. And she did that time and was able to come up with it. Happy to report Jamesia Law back into the game for Delaware State. They checked her out over in the corner working on that shoulder, but she's back into action here. Now a pass missing the uh, recipient as they try to go inside and right to Ryder. Yeah, these possessions are getting bigger and bigger here. We've got to take care of the basketball. Tomorrow to Fireball. Fireball tries to go inside. She's blocked. And it's a good block by Collins. Gives it off. Law. Into the foul circle, backs it up now. Goes left side to Collins, back to Law as she backs up onto the logo Rado at center court. Rado settles in into the 2-3 zone. All alone underneath, just waiting for the pass, and she gets a Demi Moore for two. That was that was, that was was a heads-up play by, by, by Janaza Law. 51-41, 10-point lead for the Hornets again into the double figures for the lead. They need to hold on here. 340 left in the game. Evans out to Moses. Working inside off the glass. Nice layup shot by Rafaela Tucson. Well, you got a three, you got a three, what is 333 remaining here? Eight-point game. Lady Hornets winning, uh, yep. leading by eight. 51-43. You know, uh, HSRN uh, for uh, for uh, about 15 years or so, well, maybe even longer, has been a network that you could go to in the fall for football and in the winter for basketball. But HSRN is now more than that. 24 hours, seven days a week of programming and new programs being added all the time. You can listen in the afternoon at uh, 3 o'clock. Mark Gray's got a great talk show. You can even call in, give your opinion to Mark Gray. Thursday night at 8 o'clock, uh, raw law program, a very, very good program, uh, and uh, studies all aspects of law. We're adding new programming all the time, and that is on HSRN 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Supplemented some with some of our classic games, and then on HSRN 2 and 3 and 4 and our other our side channels, you'll find our, our sports programming. So. Tune in any day, any time for what's happening on HSRN. Lady Hornets is bringing the ball up the floor here. Just under three and a half minutes. Janaysia Law passes it, left side now. They go down inside, baseline, feed it underneath. Demi Moore! That's a good interior pass in there. From they worked that well. Four touches and it was in. 53-43. Doing a great job getting the ball down into the middle of the zone. Three minutes left in the game. DeMauro looks, gives it off to Toomey. Toomey, top of the key. Pass batted back. She tried to pass it again. Stolen by Collins. She'll take it end-to-end -end and get the layup. Collins makes it a 12-point lead. 
55-43. This last push right here just might be enough to get them out of here. A point where they didn't want to have the lead uh, whittled away. Now they're able to increase it. Down to 235 left. And more, DeMauro got tied up there. She finally got some help and got it off to Evans. Evans works it down. She goes off the glass and gets two. 55-45. Hornets right now would be smart to hold the ball a little bit and use up that clock with a 10-point lead. They'll pass it, though, and give it off. Demi Moore having a good run here in the last few minutes, and she gets two more and makes it 57-45. to 45. And we'll have a timeout here with two minutes, 13 seconds left in the game. Yeah, this we'll last take a little break push. here. This is Delaware State University basketball on HSRN, the voice of choice. What were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> this last push might just be enough. Yeah. And, and the, the clock is in our favor here. Yeah, they just take their time now and, you know, don't be in no rush. They should be okay, but they, you know, they've shown a little bite down, a little grit today. Maybe to really kind of pep it up a little bit. He took it. Hornets showing some stuff here on the season opener today against Ryder right now with a 12-point lead on the Bronx. Yeah, Lady Hornets showing a little full-court man-to-man here, just trying to keep pressure on Ryder, giving up nothing easy. Ryder went into their tournament last March as a top seed. Hornet, now they're 0-3 so far on the season. There's a steal by Delaware State. Janaysia Law takes it away. And then as she passes it off to Collins, Collins starts down court. And we're going to get a blocking foul called on Maya Hyacinth. Possession foul. Delaware State will inbound it now. Now under two minutes to play and a 12-point lead. Standing up here against pretty good out-of-conference competition today to start the season. That's a really nice outing for the Lady Hornets. It's Kroomber. It's great execution. Collins jumper missing. Everybody in there trying for that rebound. How are they going to call anything? It touched, they say, a Delaware State hand last. There were about uh, 12 hands in there trying to get that ball. They said touch last by Delaware State. Goes out of bounds. Ryder will have it with a minute and 43 to play. Yeah, from, the, from here to the end, if the Lady Hornets just take their time, you know, you can exhaust this minute and 43 away without them having an opportunity to come back. Yeah, they don't want to shoot too fast on any exactly. possessions they get. They can use that clock. Better tell Coach Caputo that. <laughs> <laughs> tell the players. <laughs> Tomorrow, giving it off to Moses. Moses back to tomorrow. They try to go right side. Ball knocked out of bounds. Lyric Turner saying that she didn't touch it last. They did, but the officials saying Ryder will get the ball that Turner touched it last, knocking it out of bounds, down to a minute and 27 with 15 seconds on the shot clock. And the inbound being contested there. DeMauro manages to get it. Collins giving her trouble. DeMauro working around to the right side, passes it off, gives it off to Evans. Evans, jumper, hits off the back of the room. And it is uh, Kyle, uh, Joey Holmes in there going up high for the rebound. And now the smart thing here, Lyric Turner is just going to stand near center court and dribble the ball and use some of the time. One minute left in the game. And the Hornets up by 12. A chance to win the season opener, season opener against a, a, a larger conference foe. Turner down, five seconds left on the shot clock. They'll get the shot away. It's off the rim, comes down, rebounded. Strong rebound by Holmes. Hits again off the rim, goes out of bounds. It will be Ryder ball, 39 and a half seconds left to play. Again, I don't think they needed another shot. They got the ball back, new shot clock started. 
You melt the clock down. If you don't use these situations as teaching moments when you're in a big game and you really need to exhaust the clock, I'm not sure if they'll know how to do it. But let's just hope it's something that he uses as a teaching tool moving forward. Ryder calling a timeout here as uh, the defending champion of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference uh, looking to go 0-4 to start their season. You want to follow us, and, and this is a season when, when uh, you know, we've already been through a couple of cancellations uh, for the men and women. So you want to keep up on, on what's happening. Suggest that you follow us on Twitter at HS Radio or, and or, HSRN The Network on Facebook because we're posting all of our games. If there's a cancellation, we'll post that. But we'll also let you know what action is coming up, too. Can you so, go back and watch on delay? No, not, no. On, not on that. But I think you can find it on YouTube sometimes. I think it's a little late right now. Yeah, they just picked up two more, so it's going to be 57-47 with 31 and a half, uh, 31.1 Yeah, I'm not really getting the, the coaching, game. though. Ryder coach basically uh, allowing the Lady Hornets to hold the ball at half court and, and milk down 20 seconds, and then you score a basket and call a timeout. <laughs> you, just, you just allowed them to exhaust almost 20, 25 seconds off shot clock, the possession before. And Ryder with one timeout left now. With, Maybe we'll uh, learn something new today. 34 and a half seconds left in the game and down by 10. If there's a if there's a 10-point play out there. Well, you know, a couple of threes and you can be back in it pretty quickly. Well, I just don't know if there have been enough possessions in the game. you got one shot yeah. clock left, right? Yeah, you got to make steals, and if, if uh, Hornets are holding the ball and not passing it, your chances uh, for steals dwindle away too. And if, if right now the Hornets are smart, they're going to hold that ball and uh, pass it. There's... Four and a half seconds difference between the game clock and what will be the shot clock when we come back to action here as the Hornets will have 30 seconds with the ball, 34.4 seconds left in the game. Yeah, but winning basketball tells you at this point you don't need any more points. You just need time to expire. So I, I don't see any reason why they would be looking for a shot. No, just hold on to it and, and shoot before the shot clock runs out. Defense has been a major factor for Delaware State today. There's a bad pass on the inbound. They were looking to throw it down court, and it didn't go that far. DeMauro ended up with the ball, and she just shot two to make I'm, it 57-49. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm just not even sure what the Lady Hornets are doing here. Yeah. All you got to do is get the ball in bound and allow them to foul you Yeah, and they to tried, go to the free throw line. They and tried you're to pass to, it down court on a break. Don't overcoach it. I mean, it's... You just got to keep the game really simple. This time they inbound it to Kroomber. That should have happened the first time. And she got fouled. And uh, Rafaela Toussaint with her second foul of the game. Hornets will inbound it again. There's 27.8 seconds left on the clock. The shot clock is not a factor now. Inbounded, off the hands of Janasia Law, out of bounds. It'll be a turnover to Ryder. Hornet's going to make some uh, substitutions here. Bullock will come into the game, and Turner will go to the bench. Ryder will have the ball under their own backboard on this inbound. With 27.1 seconds to play. Down by 12. Or 8, rather. Jumper. Good. 57 to 51. And as we come down now, Ryder commits the foul. Down to 16.1 seconds. Well, I stand to be corrected. You definitely said they could make it interesting, and that they have done that. Yeah, you thought you thought with uh, 30 seconds left and a 10-point difference. A, st it, a it, steal nine, you really got a different kind of game. Yeah, yeah. It's a six-point game right now. 16 seconds left. 
The inbound pass for Delaware State is clean. Comes in to Lyric Turner, and they're going to foul her. Took a while to foul her, though. They lost some time on that. Lanasia Evans finally with the foul with 13.4 seconds left in the game. Yeah, I think the officials are trying to get out of here, too, so they're not going to call the first one. you got to make sure you make it very <laughs> obvious at this point. I think this one's safe now. 13 seconds left, six-point game. We'll see. Inbounded by Collins. She'll get it in to Bullock, and Bullock, as she takes it down court, gets fouled. She makes one of these free throws game, ball game over. Yeah. Comes a three-possession game with 11.8 seconds remaining. So Mimi Bullock goes to the line for Delaware State. Let's see if we've got any information. Uh, let's see. 67% from the line last season. I'll tell you, all of these young ladies are looking very much improved from last year. They're playing with a great – she makes the um, – Bullock makes the first free throw. That's important. Now she can seal the deal here. Well, it's a done deal. It's a three-possession game with 11.2, 11.8 to go. Yep. Probably not to miss the second miss the shot, second. but it's a seven-point lead. Yeah. It's not three possessions left. Fireball passes it around. Four seconds, three seconds. Shot from outside, misses. Saved by Ryder as time runs Open. out. And the Hornets pick up an opening win here today at Memorial Hall over the Bronx of Ryder University. Final score of 58 to 51. Saw some good offensive play from Delaware State. Solid play from last year's veterans and some contributions from some of the new players this year. Well, they definitely looked improved. You know, obviously this is the first game. And you can anticipate them getting much, much better. But um, the first one is always a little choppy. Idea is just to make sure that you win. You want to try to win the early games as you're improving and trying to develop chemistry with each other. But um, they definitely look um, tremendously improved, particularly the young ladies who played last year. So the program is building. So he, Coach Caputo has to be you know, pretty happy and excited about that. And coming down the stretch there at the, in the fourth quarter, a time last year when sometimes when the Hornets had a lead, they might fade away. There was no fade this year. They came back and made it stronger and even opened up a 12-point lead in the fourth quarter. Well, that's good stuff, though. Just to, you know, to just be happy to open this season with a win. And, um, and you know, again, you got a few new pieces, um, but the idea is just to build chemistry. And then while you're building chemistry to try to make sure you secure as many wins as possible. So that way when you start coming down the back stretch of your season, you've accumulated some W's. And you're, you're, and you're playing for a champion. You're trying to get yourself into championship mode. That's a good start because uh, when, when we get into conference play in January, it'll be nice to have a W or two on the books before you get to playing those teams in the conference. And, of course, this year conference play is going to be very different as they've split the MEAC into the two divisions. UMES, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, the Fighting Hawks have opted out of the season. So... Delaware State will have at least a home and away series with Morgan State, Coppin State, Howard, Norfolk State, and Norfolk State. That's eight games and maybe a third game against a couple of those. We're still waiting for the final schedule from the MEAC, and that's supposed to be out any day now uh, to see what that looks like. Now one of the earlier schedules had them playing each other at least three times. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to stand firm to that. Uh, and they possibly may have to, particularly with one team dropping out, just to generate some games. I yeah. think they're trying to generate somewhere between 15 to 16 games, yeah, regular but, season for conference play. Yep, yeah. and, and that would get them then into March where they go to Norfolk and they play in the MEAC tournament. Uh, and the Delaware State women uh, hope to go into that seated pretty high as well. Sure, all of the coaches are looking forward to that. you got to play somebody that's so familiar with you three times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the time you get to tournament play, Hey, look, we almost need another team. <laughs> it's almost like a championship series in baseball where you've, you've played the teams in your division so many times that season. There's no secrets no. at that point. So yeah. that you know what they always say, the cream rises to the top. So the better teams should win. They should. Doesn't on, all, they don't always win, but they should at yeah, that point. Yeah, there's, there's going to be some factors between now and mid-March, and some of those may be injuries. Uh, exactly. And, and uh you know, teams that, that don't meet expectations or exceed expectations. Delaware State was picked to finish third in the conference. 
We'll see what happens. But they got off to a good start here in non-conference play against the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference team in Ryder that took their tournament last year. They were the top seed going into that thing, and they beat them pretty well. Uh, you know, this was not a sneak away and, oh, boy, we're, we're glad we, we got off uh, with that one. This was a game where they led right from the beginning. Right. And Ryder never got closer than about five points, and the Hornets will take this one by seven. I think the biggest thing to take from today's game is that they play with tremendous defensive intensity. Their defense set the tone of the game. They got a lot of um, steals. They got a lot of opportunities where they got out in the transition and got easy baskets. Um, and, and they had some lapses, but for the most part, they played a pretty complete game in, t- in, in the idea of doing what they wanted to do, and that's to be an up-tempo team that – that puts on a lot of pressure defensively, particularly with their man-to-man um, half court. So let's just see how they build, though. But they got a little more size, and um, and and they're playing with like they're um, a lot of those younger players that when he, uh, Coach Caputo has last year, they're playing with tremendous amount more confidence, and 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 they're out there making plays. Well, last year they were just kind of they were just kind of out there at times and really not knowing what was going to happen and if they could make a play. This year they're playing with a confidence level that demonstrates that they're willing to step up and they know how to step up to make plays for them. So they're looking to improve. I'm excited about them. All right. This is a copyrighted broadcast of the Heritage Sports Radio Network and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast of the accounts of this game without the...